Okay, let's get straight to it. This is Year 11 Practice Sheet 2, starting with some operations with negative numbers. So um, for 1a, we're doing 5 times 13. In my head, I would do that as 10 times 13, which is 130, and then half it to get 65. Uh, but of course, one of the values that we're multiplying is negative, so the answer is negative. So that's minus 65. Part b, um, simply do the sum first. So 120 divided by 4 which you should be able to do in your head, it's 30, and then consider that they're both negative, um, which means the answer is going to be positive. Finally, for part C, um, we're doing minus 3 squared. So you simply would do 3 squared, which is 9, and then you consider that it's a negative multiplied by itself, multiplied by a negative, which gives you a positive. Of course, you don't need to write the plus, um, but we still need to add the 1. So 9 plus 1 is 10, and Bob's your uncle, that's your answer. Right, part D and onwards, when you're adding and subtracting with decimals, it's really helpful to draw a number line. So the first number in your sum is where you're starting. So for this sum, we're starting at minus 4. And if we're going to subtract 17, subtracting an ordinary positive number means we go left on the number line. So we're getting more negative, which means the answer is minus 21. So minus 4 take away 17 is minus 21. For part E, um, we're going to look at it the same way, but we start at number 8. So we can make ourselves a number line and stick 8 on there. Now, when we have two signs written next to each other, they can be combined. So a minus and a minus next to each other is the same as doing a plus. So this sum simply becomes 8 plus 5. Well, hopefully that shouldn't be too much of a problem and you don't really need the number line. 8 plus 5 is 13. For part F, um, Again, we're going to look at it the same way. Minus 12 is where we're starting. So get ourselves a number line, stick minus 12 on there. And in the same way that we did for part E, we can look at these two signs next to each other and say that that negative and a negative makes a positive. So minus 12 plus 8. If you add a, a positive number, it means you're going to the right. So going to the right by 8, getting less negative, but not all the way to 0. So we still are negative, and the answer is minus 4. Okay, question two. We're on to solving equations, so let's give ourselves a bit more space to work in here. And for part A, we have 2x minus 5 equals 11. So the x term appears on the left, it's positive, that's all fine. So let's just um, get rid of the minus 5 from the left-hand side and go from there. So we do the opposite to minus 5, we add 5, and we do that to both sides. So we're left with 2x on the left, and 11 plus 5 is 16 on the right. And then we simply need to divide both sides of my equation by 2. And I'm going to end up with x is equal to 8. Short and sweet. Um, for part b, we have x on the left again. Um, whereas before we had minus 5, so we added. Here we have plus 10. So we're going to do the opposite to plus 10, which is to minus 10. So we subtract 10 from both sides, which means on the left it just disappears. And on the right, 60 take away 10 is 50, of course. So to get x now, we have to divide by 5 to undo the multiplication by 5. So we're left with x is equal to 10. Part C, more interesting now because we've got x appearing on both sides. Um, you have to gather x together on one side or the other. It doesn't matter which in general, but here we've got fewer x's on the left. So I'm going to get rid of that x from there by subtracting it from both sides. Now the key thing here is when you subtract x from the left, we still have minus 3. Don't lose that minus sign. Um, on the right, however, 3x take away x gives me 2x, and the plus 7 is still there. So now I've got a positive lot of x's on the right, so I just need to get rid of everything else. Get rid of the plus 7 by doing the inverse, subtracting 7. Minus 3 take away 7 gets more negative. That's minus 10. So minus 10 equals 2x, and finally divide both sides of my equation by 2, and I get minus 5 equals x, and there's my solution. Okay, for part d, I haven't got x on both sides, but it's negative here. And I could leave it there, but in general, it's a good policy to move x to the other side if it's negative. Um, then it will become positive. So we're going to add 3x to both sides. If I do that here on the left, all I'm left with is the 4. On the right, I have the 2 that was already there, and then the plus 3x, which I've added. And now I just need to get rid of the 2, 
So I'm going to do that by subtracting 2 from both sides. So 4 take away 2 is 2. And on the right, I'm just left with 3x. And finally, I've got to divide by 3. So on the left, um, don't be tempted to do this as a sum. It's 2 divided by 3. It's just 2 thirds. So x is 2 thirds is your answer, and that's fine as a fraction. Uh, part E, x is on both sides, and we've got one of them where it's a negative quantity of x's. So it makes sense to get rid of x from there. Um, so we do the inverse. We've got minus 2x, so the inverse of that is to add 2x. So we're going to add 2x to both sides. That means that on the left I've got the 3 that was still there. Um, and that's all. On the right, I have x plus the 2x gives me 3x, and I still have the plus 12. Now I need to get rid of that plus 12 so to isolate x. So subtract 12 from both sides. 3 take away 12, we're going to the left on the number line. So 3 take away 12 is minus 9, and that is equal to 3x. And finally, I just need to divide both sides by that 3 to get rid of it. So if you divide by 3, minus 9 divided by 3 is minus 3, and that is equal to x, and that's our solution. OK, now for f. We've got x appearing on both sides, but we've also got this, we've got these brackets. And your instinct should be when you see brackets in an equation, to expand them, okay, in a linear equation. So we've got the 3 there, that is nothing to do with the brackets, that just stays there. Then expanding the brackets, we have minus 2 times 2x, which is minus 4x. We have minus 2 times the 1, which is just minus 2. And on the right, we haven't done anything, we've just got x plus 17, so that stays the same. Um, and I've got x on both sides now, and like before, I've got a negative term on the left, so that's the one I'm going to get rid of. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to add 4x to both sides. On the left, then, what I'll have left is the 3 and the minus 2. So obviously 3 take away 2 gives me 1, so I can just write 1 on the left-hand side. On the right, I've got the x uh, plus the 4x to give me 5x, and I've still got the plus 17. So I need to subtract 17 from both sides. That will get rid of the 17 from there, um, which will leave me uh, 5x on the right-hand side. On the left, 1 take away 17. And we're going to the left on the number line. That's going to be minus 16. And the last step is to divide by 5 um, to get rid of the 5x. So that leaves just x on the right. On the left, um, a bit like part D, we end up with a fraction. and that could be your answer. You could be happy with leaving it as an improper fraction, um, but you could also work it out as a decimal. 16 divided by 5 is uh, 3.2, um, and because it's minus 16 divided by 5, it's minus 3.2. So that's an alternative solution. Right, last bit, simultaneous equations. The first thing that you should do when you see simultaneous equations is label them. Give them labels 1 and 2, or A and B. Then you can describe exactly what you're doing. Then you compare the coefficients of x, they're not the same. The coefficients of y aren't the same. So we can't just subtract or add these equations. We're going to have to change them to make the numbers of x's or the numbers of y's the same. In this case, I'm going to choose x because I can see that 5x and 3x can both be quite easily made into 15x. 15 is the lowest common multiple of 3 and 5. So to do that, I would take equation 1 and triple it times the whole thing by 3. So 5x times 3 is 15x. Uh, minus 7y times 3 is minus 21y. And then you've got 27 times 3, which is uh, 81. So that's my new equation. Call it equation 3. Just quickly label it. And then we have to take equation 2 and make that have a 15x in, which means we have to times by 5. So 3x times 5 is 15x. And then we have minus 4y times 5, which is minus 20y, and 16 times 5, which is 80. So call that equation 4. And now we're good to go because we've got the same number in front of x. We've got 15x and 15x. Now you might use this way of remembering things. SSS it stands for same sign subtract. And we're talking about the sign of the two things that we're trying to eliminate. Now here that's 15x and 15x. They're both positive. They're both the same sign, therefore we're going to subtract our equations. Now you can do this either way around. I'm going to do equation 4, take away equation 3. Um, and if we look at the 
first set of things we're subtracting, the 15x, take away 15x. Well, that gives me no x's altogether. That's the whole point, getting rid of the x's. You can write 0x if you want, but obviously there's nothing there. Next, we've got minus 20y, take away minus 21y. Now you have to take care with this. This is a common place to make mistakes. If you're not sure, write it out like I'm doing. Minus 20y, minus minus 21y. We have a minus and a minus next to each other, so I can write it as minus 20y plus 21y. And if I think about a number line, starting at minus 20, going right by 21, I get to 1. So 1y, or simply y. So when I subtract that, I get y. And finally, I have to do 80, take away 81. Make sure you get this the right way around. So in this case, I get minus 1. Now, whenever you get your first value with simultaneous equations, you always want to substitute back into one of your equations to get the other value. Uh, technically, it doesn't matter which one you substitute into. Uh, but pick the one that looks nicest or the simplest. There's not much in it in this case. I'm going to go with equation 2. Um, so if we look up at equation 2, um, that's 3x minus 4y equals 16 up here. So 3x is just 3x, but minus 4y is now minus 4 times minus 1, because that's the value that I've worked out for y. And then the rest of the equation is just equals 16. And this simply solves to give me x. So minus 4 times minus 1 is plus 4. Get that right. And then we can solve by subtracting 4 from both sides. So I end up with uh, 3x equals 12. Divide by 3, and I get my x value. x equals 4. Um, so it's always good just to bring the values together. So to sum up, my solution to the simultaneous equations is that x equals 4 and y equals minus 1. And that's it.